Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today on this Sunday. I am Carrie from OESD. Uh, it is always fabulous to see you. Um, it didn't occur to me when I was scheduling this that some of you um, may be also watching football today, although this might be a good excuse to not have to watch football, depending on uh, what kind of sports fan you are. Um, I am originally from Buffalo, New York, so I will just throw a go Bills out there. Um, I will also admit that I have not been watching the game today. So I know my mom is out there. Hi, mom. Thank you for keeping me updated on the, uh, the score. Oh, we've won. So go Bills. Um, so today um, we are going to be talking about the really cool new uh, freestanding floral pumpkin patch uh, from Scissor Tail Stitches. Uh, some of you know and are watching us on the Scissor Tail Stitches page. Uh, Scissor Tail Stitches is OESD uh, Embroidery Online's little sister. Um, kind of a funky little sister. So it's kind of fun because it gives us the freedom to do some other types of collections. Our freestanding pumpkins are one of our most popular collections over on uh, Embroidery Online OESD. And so it was fun to kind of reimagine that because, um, you know, it's nice to have a couple of different options um, as well. So um, we're going to talk about that. Let me show, I'll show you guys uh, mine in just a second. Uh, we're also going to spend some time talking about uh, freestanding structures or objects in general and what the best solutions are stabilizer wise for those things um, because we get those questions a lot and there's a little bit where I need you guys to be embroidery detectives. Uh, Kelly who's one of our educators says says that a lot uh, you know there's not one size fits all necessarily. Uh, we give you the instructions if you do exactly what we do with, with fabrics and things, but if you kind of go um, away from the original intention of the project, which is great, you have to kind of think about what that means as far as stabilizers and all that kind of stuff. So and we'll talk about that. But first and foremost, I wanted to show you um, my freestanding floral pumpkins. So this collection is really fun. Um, this is the uh, floral version. You can see the floral um, stitches on here. This I actually did this one in cork and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this is a medium size. And then we also have a non-floral version. This is my non-floral um, done in sparkle. I actually don't have any done in plain uh, fabric here at home. Um, the office has the original versions and I kind of went, you know, off and, and did my own thing. So um, each pumpkin, uh, so plain and floral, comes in three sizes, um, a large, a medium, and small. These are both mediums, just as reference. Um, I have a large one. Oh. This is my large compared to the medium. And I'm going to be assembling the small one um, today. So um, I wanted, like I said, to talk to you guys a little bit about... Um, stabilizing first but um thank you guys all for saying hi it's great to see you all there so give me a shout out tell me where you're watching from um the uh it makes me very happy to see you all and some familiar names and and um birdie out there birdie is a great uh, member of our facebook uh, group if you are a uh, if you don't already belong to the perfect stitch which is our facebook group make sure uh, you join that just be sure to agree to the rules when you ask to join. Uh, basically, there be nice and uh, play fair. If you say yes to those things, we'll let you in. Uh, we have almost 10,000 members now, and it's a really, really fun place to get to um, share your projects. It's a private group, so if you want to share projects that you're working on that you don't want your sister-in-law or your husband or your daughter to see, if you're not in the group, you can't see anything that goes on in there. So that's kind of a fun place. So um, I was thinking about this um, kind of how I was going to talk to you guys about stabilizer. And I was thinking about, do you, you guys probably remember uh, Choose Your Own Adventure? Um, I remember reading those books. I don't know if they exist anymore, but I think that choosing stabilizer for a project is a little bit like Choose Your Own Adventure, right? We're going to write uh, instructions for you that are based on whatever the thing is that we're making exactly as it stands, right? So uh, in the case of the pumpkin, um, if you were going to make it out of quilting cotton, which is how we did it for the sample, 
If you follow the instructions that we write, we give you a full color PDF always with the collection. If you're gonna follow those exactly, you would have perfect success. But if you wanted to do what I did and cork or sparkle or something else, you have to think about why we suggested the stabilizer um, that we did and if it still works for you. So my choose your own adventure is kind of how, how we're gonna play this game. So the first, que the first question that you are going to, to ask yourself, obviously, when you are making a freestanding something is, is the thing you wanna make digitized to be freestanding? If it is, great, we get to continue. And if it's not, you should probably stop. These are generalizations. Um, the, you don't always, you can sometimes embroider something to be freestanding that's not meant to be, but you're gonna need to do it on organza or something, and we're not gonna talk about that today. So first question is, is it digitized to be freestanding? If it is, we get to continue. Okay, let me know if you guys are, are not following. It seems like everybody's good, but okay. So question number two is, does your freestanding thing have applique? Meaning, is there fabric or are there just stitches? So if it does have applique, we have another question. And if it's not, we can just assume that you can use two layers of a water-soluble stabilizer. We suggest Aquamesh. Um, Aquamesh is our fantastic water-soluble stabilizer. It is um, really important to use two layers always. So you will always find us using two layers of some sort of water-soluble um, in our freestanding, uh, whether it be lace or structures. Um, Aquamesh, which is this, let's see, you guys can see it is a soft, um, meshy kind of stabilizer. Can be easily mistaken for our poly mesh, which is our non-water soluble. So make sure you test if you don't have your label stuck inside. Um, two layers, because when you are doing freestanding, there are typically so many stitches that if you don't support it, it can kind of pull apart. Uh, we see that a lot in, cust in the customer care uh, uh, email inbox. Um, also remember to really, really hoop tightly when you're putting your stabilizer in your hoop because all those stitches can kind of pull. And if it's not securely in the hoop or there's uh, ability to pull, the freestanding parts can not connect properly. So if your freestanding thing is a structure, we'll go to our next question. Is your chosen applique fabric floppy <laughs> floppy is the best word that i can come up with so for example we have our quilting cotton right let's get this in the camera this is just a plain old piece of black quilting cotton if you're making a structure this is not going to stand up on its own right so we have questions a lot about uh, stable stick. So when we're doing a freestanding structure, and those of you who have done them or checked out the instructions, you will see that it says to back your applique fabric in stable stick. And that is because this doesn't stand up on its own. If you were going to do what I did and use um, cork, this is a piece of cork, right? So that has its own rigidity or a piece of sparkle fabric, right? While it's flopping over, it's not collapsing in on itself. So if your fabric is floppy, you are going to back your cotton in stable stick. We'll talk about that in a second. So if it's stable on its own, you don't need to always uh, or often add an extra layer of rigidity with the stable stick. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me know in the comments if that didn't make sense. My choose your own adventure theory may be kind of off the rails, but it made sense to me in my head, <laughs> which is a little bit scary. So again, let's talk stabilizer. Aquamesh is our water soluble, water, 
water soluble stabilizer. Um, it rinses out easily in warm running water. So if you're ever having trouble uh, removing it, you want to make sure your water is running and that it's warm. It does not clog your pipes. Uh, we have that question a lot. I have used it for years and years, and um, many, many of our educators and our customers have also used it for years and years. The key is to use running water. So let your water run through your pipes a little bit, um, and that's going to flush things out. Um, I have people in my life who have septic tanks. It is also a non-issue. The other thing you'll see us for um, suggest a lot is badge master so this is our badge master it's kind of a cellophane looking thing so when we do structures we often suggest because remember two layers of water soluble you're going to use a one layer of aqua mesh one layer of badge master so the reason that you're going to use one layer of each is that you want your freestanding piece when you're done rinsing to be a little sticky before it dries. And what that sticky is, is the starch from the water soluble stabilizers that when it all dries, it's gonna give it that stiffness. So if you guys um, use starch in your laundry, um, you know that when it's wet, it's kind of odd, but as it dries, it becomes crispy. So the starch is what a component of these stabilizers, stabilizers are made of. So our badge master is a lot thicker and a lot starchier. So adding that into your one layer of aqua mesh is gonna leave more starch when you're done, which is going to make your object stiffer. So in that same vein, the more you rinse, the softer your end product is going to be. So if you're going to do lace that is going to be a doily, we just released our um, autumn freestanding doilies um, over on Embroidery Online. Um, if you want it to be soft, it doesn't, It you just rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse. You can even throw it in the washing machine. If you want it to be stiff at the end, if you need it to stand up, you rinse it. I rinse it basically until I can't see globs anymore and let it be. It is hard for me to do because it does feel like it needs to be rinsed more, but the more stabilizer you leave in, the stiffer it's going to be. You can always keep rinsing if you if it dries and you see a strange glob or it's not right, just rinse, you know, dampen it and rinse it again. It's easier to take more out than put it in, though you can certainly add more in with spray starch or by dissolving some stabilizer in water and dipping it in there. But it's easier to kind of re-rinse than to add in. It doesn't matter. It's a great question. Lori asked, which goes on top, the aqua mesh or the badge master? It doesn't matter. Um, technically, I always put my aqua mesh on, or my, excuse me, I put my badge master on top. And the reason is it's a little bit um, sti uh, sticky, I guess. You know, it's got a little bit more grip to it. So I guess in my head, I'm thinking if it's on the bottom, that it could kind of cause friction between the underside of my hoop and the top of my machine. I don't know if that's true and if that would happen, it's just what I do. You also don't have to fill the entirety of the hoop with the uh, badge master. So you do want to hoop it, but if it doesn't fill up the whole hoop, if you have your hoop filled with your aqua mesh, you should be fine. So, and then we have the um, stable stick. So we're talking again about freestanding objects so buildings um pumpkins we get this question a lot what so because stable stick can also be used as a stabilizer people get confused when we use it for when we suggest to use it in freestanding they think it's going in the hoop but in this case your stable stick is actually a treatment for your fabric. So um, we suggest the stable stick cut away. Uh, in a pinch, you can use stable stick tear away because it doesn't dissolve in water. So um, the reason we suggest the cutaway over the tear away is that you're gonna be rinsing this um, and it you don't want it to fall apart. The tear away version is pretty hardy to rinsing. Um, we can talk about tear aways on a different day, but cutaway would be the preferred option because it truly is not going to um, be affected by the rinsing. So for example, let me show you guys, see if I can do this. So we have our piece of quilters cotton. And then we have, I've already cut out 
two pieces of stable stick. So we suggest the two pieces of stable stick on the back of your applique piece. So you have the back side of your quilter's cotton. And then you're just gonna take, of course doing this on camera, it's always fun, and peel off the paper backing of the stable stick. There's your sticky part. And do that with both pieces. So what this is doing is making the and this doesn't have to be that perfect, but so now your quilter's cotton is stiff like your cork would be or any other product. So hopefully that makes sense as to why you use the stable stick when you're making a freestanding structure. So you really need to think about the fabric you're using because that really makes a difference with how you treat it. So when we do our samples, we almost always use a quilter's cotton because that's so readily available to so many of you, which is why we put the stable stick on. So hopefully that clears up some mysteries for some of you. Um, a lot of you have done the applique, freestanding applique before, but essentially you are going to just stitch your first step. In this case, this is the petal for the pumpkin. And then you just cover that piece with your applique, whatever you're gonna use for your applique, in this case, my quilter's cotton, it's gonna come stitch that down. You trim away the excess and that is how you create that applique piece. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Um, everyone is very quiet in the comments, so hopefully that means that you are all learning and taking intense notes. Um, just know that you can um, watch this. I'll put this on YouTube when we're done here. It'll also be available on the, um, in the video column on the Facebook page. So um, I have some questions. Uh, what kind of needle i you know what i just use an embroidery 7511 and i have never had trouble um that is just me i it sounds i'm not quite sure why your needle is getting gummed up um it's not something i've had trouble with if anybody else has a solution please put it in the comments um and roxy asks if you spray your cotton material magic would this replace a layer of stable stick so these structures are gonna last a long time, right? And mine get kind of beat up. They, you know, they go in storage, they come out, I handle them. And so the stable stick is going to last long-term a lot better than um, a material magic is, I know it's not a spray starch, but essentially it's a spray stiffener. So long-term, I think you're gonna be a lot happier with um, something that's permanent, a, a, a substance of um, a stabilizer or a, a you know, a stiffener in that in that way, more so than um, a spray stiffener. And again, that's my opinion. I, I haven't tested it. To me, I really feel like for these objects that take so much time, you know, we spend a lot of time testing things. Um, and so I tend to stick to the general things that we spend so much time testing. Um, I don't feel like my time is worth um, risking it being not working long term. So again, that's me and, and that's a, a great question. Um, and it also kind of brings me to, to a question we get a lot. I get a lot of questions about um, what could I use instead of the thing that we suggest? And I certainly understand why someone would ask that question, but you know, OESD and we're, we're really fortunate. We've been doing this for 30 years. And we um, have a full line of embroidery stabilizers. We're one of the only companies that does sort of the whole gamut, right? We, we produce amazing embroidery designs. Our digitizers are second to none. If you've seen our new Enchanted Santa, you will certainly agree. And we also have the stabilizer to go along with it. Uh, we don't have unnecessary stabilizer. We really have tailored our line to the products that work best for us. So when we suggest something, it's because we know it's going to work. So you're not gonna find me uh, suggesting a substitute for that in most cases, because if, if I want you to have the best results, I'm going to tell you what works uh, with all of our testing. 
Um, and that's just to make, you know, we always want you to have the best results. That doesn't mean you couldn't figure something else up out on your own. You know, your knowledge versus someone else's knowledge are two separate things. So we give the information for the, the most people. Um, and then once you get comfortable embroidering, as so many of you are, you um, can certainly kind of go off of the beaten path. Um, but my job is to make sure that the most of you have success. So I just wanted to say that. Um, Miss Linda asked what the name of our private Facebook group is, and it's called The Perfect Stitch with OESD. So make sure you search that and ask to join. Make sure you agree to the rules. So now, <laughs> I guess let's go back to the reason that most of you are here is to uh, talk about the freestanding floral pumpkin patch. So if you have any other questions about general freestanding, put them in there. Um, for a second, though, I'm just going to talk about how to um, make the freestanding um, pumpkins, because I think it's a really unique thing. So let's go over there and do that. So here, whoop, here we are. So this is our freestanding pumpkin. And again, I've done mine in sparkle fabric. The sparkle fabric is really cool. Let's see, I have a piece of it here. Um, I found mine in the craft section of the um, of my local craft store with the craft felt. So um, it's backed in kind of a canvassy looking um, fabric, I guess. So anything that you can embroider through you could use for this, but I would definitely test it out. Um, there are some fabrics that I tried and um, I will admit that I broke some needles and thought that it might not be the best thing. So again, this is a sparkle fabric I got at a local craft store, a big box store. It was in the aisle with the craft felt. So I don't, it doesn't have an official name. It's just glittery fabric stuff. I, I don't know if you go to the store and you ask them for glittery fabric stuff, they'll know what that means, but there we go. So like I said, you would, your first step is going to be create the petals. You would place your piece over that uh, placement stitch. It's going to um, embroider that. And I can actually show you this. I prepared, believe it or not. So we have our placement stitch. You're going to place your prepared applique fabric, whether it be quilting cotton or sparkly fabric stuff over the top of that. Then the machine is gonna stitch a tack down line and it will do two rows of that um, so that you, when you trim, you don't uh, have to worry about sit trimming through that. So then you're going to trim away the outside fabric, okay? And then it's going to stitch this satin stitch around the outside and this little detail. So you can see how quick this process is. It's a, it's a very quick um, project to make comparatively. So you're going to make six of those, six of those for every size of these. The concept is exactly the same for all um, sizes of the pumpkin. If you're doing the floral version, there's obviously going to be some extra color steps in there to do the flowers. So um, that part is all outlined in the um, instructions. So you're going to make six of these guys. You're going to rinse it out, warm running water, let them dry, and then give them a good press. Uh, I press face down into my OSD perfect press cloth and then let them cool and they should be perfect. People often forget the pressing step. Um, and you can tell when people assemble their freestanding which ones have been pressed and which ones haven't. Um, if they look a little rumpled, they often don't press. Um, and it's a step that I think is really important to do before you assemble. So then you're going to make also two little guys that look like this. I'll show you what, what you're gonna do with those in a second. Um, that's your base piece and your center support. And then you're going to have, so you're going to have your six pieces and your bottom. So you're going, so here's my 
six pieces and my bottom. See if I can get that a little closer for you. Doing it backwards. So then you're gonna take your sewing machine and one petal at a time, just do a zigzag stitch um, to attach the center piece to your petals. So if anybody needs any clarification, just ask there in the comments, but just a zigzag stitch until you have an object that looks like this. And you're gonna take a buttonhole cutter or a razor blade and you're gonna cut this piece at the bottom open. Then you take this guy. And what this is, is actually your center support. So, now here comes the fun assembly. You're gonna thread this right up through the middle, right? So now that is, and it looks like a chandelier. Okay, so now you're gonna take a good old fashioned pipe cleaner. Uh, at my craft store, it was called a fuzzy stick. I don't know if pipe cleaner is a trademarked name, but and now the fun part happens. So we are going to just one at a time thread these onto your fuzzy stick. And I forgot to put my center piece in first. So let's let's do that again. <laughs> so starting with your center piece. One, two, three. All right, so if you do that, so then you have a little pumpkin that looks like this. What I didn't tell you to make also is a fantastic little leaf. There are two sizes of leaves. So on, let's see, my big pumpkin, you can see the different sizes of leaf here. So you're just gonna thread that on as well. Now, there's a little bit of free form that happens here with the fuzzy stick. What I do is kind of wrap it about halfway, fold it in half, wrap it up again. And then I thought it was fun to kind of make little vines out of the, the rest of that. So let's see, that's the wrong way. So now you can see all three sizes of my pumpkins. And again, here is the cork version in the floral. The floral is so pretty. So let's check out the questions. Um, Donna asked if you could if you have software, can you put all petals in one hooping? You certainly can. I actually did that in my, um, just on my machine. Um, I had a real big hoop and I put a couple of them in a row. Um, with these, they're not super, super stitch intensive. So I think it's, it's a little bit safer to do that. You want to be careful about overloading your hoop when you, um, have too many stitches like if it's a it's a lace object where it's all lace because too many objects in the hoop can really pull on that stabilizer this is fairly low stitch count really uh, if you think about it it's just that satin so i certainly did um, i actually lined them all up real nice so i could cut one strip of cork uh, when i did the cork one and lay it kind of down um, I color sorted, so I did all the tack down stitches at once if that's way too much information for you that's um that's okay. Don't feel overwhelmed. You can do them one at a time. Um, again, 
this collection is one of those ones that I think you really have to see to, to really appreciate how cool it is. So it's available um, from your local OESD retailer or on scissortailstitches.com. Just search for freestanding floral pumpkin patch. It is a really, really cool collection. Um, I actually put mine on my mantle and it looked really neat. Um, a great uh, fall decor item. So I, uh, I'm hopeful <laughs> that that kind of translated the, the um, how simple these are to do. Um, it is really a, uh, a great project. And again, hopefully that cleared up some questions for you guys on freestanding um, objects in general. Um, and it doesn't look like there's any other questions. I, I guess you guys are all um, with one ear watching football and one ear uh, listening to me, but it seems like everybody's happy. It's been really fun to spend time with you as always. Um, I uh, look forward to seeing you all in the Perfect Stitch. Again, the Perfect Stitch with OESD is our private Facebook group. It is um, really great to be able to share all the projects people are working on and we love seeing you and I am there. So if you have questions, feel free to ask. I'll post this video on YouTube um, in just a little bit. Uh, so you can rewatch it if you'd like. But again, freestanding floral pumpkin patch, scissor tail stitches, or at your local OESD retailer. Um, yes, Donna, notice my snowman before you caught me before I left. Steps are the same. The snowman's actually all lace. But um, if you ever have applique in freestanding, steps are exactly the same. So um, thank you guys. Have a great Sunday. Uh, we will see you soon. Happy stitching and. Um, Stay safe out there. It is uh, great to see you. Bye-bye.